Welcome to the Bullington Capital Report, hosted by Bill Bullington. For the next hour, you'll receive information on current market conditions and trends that could affect your financial future. If you have a question for Bill, you can participate in today's program by calling 216-901-0945. That's 216-901-0WHK. You can also reach Bill by going to his website, BullingtonCapital.com. So without any additional delay, here's the host of today's program, Bill Bullington. Welcome back. Ah, kind of a nice week in the market. Things are really slow. That's uh, that's always a relief to me. <laughs> but I think they'll start to pick it back up again. I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of sure they will. And uh, it's looking good. I, I got to tell you, I think it's looking really good. Got an election year. Uh, which is typically, you know, been good for the market. The, uh, it depends you know, on the year. It's not always there's there's there are very few things that you can say you know with an eighty percent accuracy level. I mean, very few things that you can say. Other than the Browns probably won't win the Super Bowl. I mean, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I hope they do. I actually hope they do. But uh, anyway. Uh, you know, feel free to call today. We've been talking for the last few weeks, a bunch of different topics, and uh, I'd really like to hear more of what you would like to learn more about uh, financially. Um, I can kind of spin my wheels here, which uh, I feel like I do every week, but, uh, um, and it's fun, you know, I'm not complaining, uh, but I'd really like to hear what kinds of things are on your mind. You can call in the radio station, 216-901-0945. 216-901-0945 or go to my website and uh, you can contact us there. You can send us a, an email, bill at bullingtoncapital.com and uh, just what kind of things are on your mind lately? Uh, what are you uh, What are you worried about? Uh, what are you happy about? You know, What do you see coming down the road? I'd, I'd be really curious because I, I rarely know what's on the mind of the average person out there. Um, because almost all the people I talk to, are, you know, they've got a whole different set of ideas. It's amazing how significantly different people think uh, about investing in their financial lives. And uh, so it, it's been fascinating for me my whole career. It's been kind of fun, actually, in, uh, to listen and hear and uh, observe. So, you know, feel, like I said, feel free to give us a call. <clears throat> anyway, today we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me. What's happening there? <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Um, we've got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Uh, I talked about some uh, annuities a couple weeks ago, and I got a few calls in the office. People were concerned about that and uh, wanted to had questions about it. We were talking about no-load annuities. Those are annuities that have literally no sales charges. And uh, we'll come back a little bit later in the program and talk about that. I think they're great products, especially if you have large taxable accounts and are worried about you know, your taxes going up. Uh, it can make a, a big difference. These products have extremely low expense ratios uh, as opposed to a lot of others that don't. So that's something that uh, um, we'll talk more about a little bit later in today's program. And if you have any questions regarding any of that, feel free always. You can email or reach out by phone, uh, go to my website, bullingtoncapital.com. All my contact information is there. And I'd be glad to try to help you out there. And uh, oh, I also have to uh, remind everybody, we have a workshop coming up, and it's going to be, uh, um, I think, yeah, this one's going to go back to 7.30, but at 6.30, and this is on October 6th, by the way. That is a Thursday, October 6th. We've got a uh, uh a workshop before the workshop called Stock Talk. You know, for a while we had toyed around with the idea of starting an investment club, but I, and I get there was a high level of interest until everybody figured out how much work it was going to be. <laughs> and I get that. The uh, so instead of doing a formal club, it's kind of an informal club where we'll get together. Uh, I'll hand out the materials that uh, I would normally hand out to an investment club to let people know what they should look for when they're looking for a company. And, and one of the reasons I do this, by the way, is I believe everybody ought to have a, at least a small portion of money, a small portion of their money that they manage themselves. A, it's fun. B, or can be fun. Uh, B, 
it gives you an idea of what it's like, you know, what the stock market's really like. And uh, when you're doing it yourself, there's no substitute for experience. Uh, again, even if it's only 10% of your money, you know, that's probably a, a very good number, actually. And the kinds of things that I do with that portion of my money, I've got like 20, 25% allocated. Always have, always will. So whatever the account, my account value grows to in a year, uh, I won't, or goes down by, the, uh, I'll take 25% of that, and that's what I'm going to use to do these things. So that's going to begin at 630. And again, that's October 6th. You can go to my website, sign up. There's no cost to attend. Seating is limited. It's uh, the Corporate College East. It's right over there, right near the uh, Eaton headquarters on the east side. There's a big map on the, on the website when you sign up. So it should be a lot of fun because I, I know I get, I get a lot of questions on this. And uh, I think, again, there's, it's so valuable to get the experience, to try it, to know what kinds of things that uh, you should look for. That, that's a, kind of a big deal. Uh, I just finished the first little e-booklet that I'm going to put up on Amazon. Uh, and uh, we're starting on the, the second one, which will be actually the course that we'll be talking about uh, at this upcoming workshop that, during the stock talks. You know, what kinds of things do you look for when you think about it? There are several thousand stocks big enough for mutual funds to invest in. And then if you go into the really small companies, there are more than twice that number. I mean, it's probably somewhere close to 10,000. I don't know what the exact number is. I forgot. I looked at it I, you know, the other day. Not that it really matters. But there are a lot of stocks that fall outside of the institutional quality stocks that still could turn out to be really good investments. But you got, they've got to have certain criteria uh, in order for the probabilities to be high enough to invest in them. That's the kind of thing that we'll be talking about at at that first part of the, the workshop. The second part of the workshop, we're going to be talking about momentum investing, the other side of value. There are really two primary schools of thought. There's value investing and momentum investing. Those are on the opposite ends of the spectrums from each other. Both of them can work, and I like to use them in combination because when one is working very well it's typically at the expense of the other and what happens is since nobody can guess uh, accurately which one is going to begin working and when it's going to work you invest in a little bit of both of them at all times and then you rebalance your portfolio so that when one strategy has outperformed by a lot you're typically taking some money away from that strategy because we know that cycle is going to end and it's going to revert over to the other style, which we are adding to. Now, that is, the, uh, that is cool. That's market timing without timing. That's timing the market without having to know when it's going to happen. And it solves that problem, which I think is kind of cool. You know, I don't have to guess. I know. I don't have to know what the market's going to do. I have to know what I'm going to do in response. And um, boy, does that take a load off your shoulders. <laughs> I'm telling you, the uh, it just takes a load off. You know, you, you've got a plan. Uh, it doesn't matter what the market does. You know what you're going to do. And uh, that's why I have uh, a business, you know, because we, we have a plan. And the two strategies I'll talk about in, uh, in detail, one of them is going to be the ETF model, which incidentally has been shifting over the past few weeks and has gone into categories which typically... Now, this can change, by the way, can change in a heartbeat, which typically begin to lead when you get a big run in the market. Now, that can turn around and, and go south, and it can change directions. So uh, I wouldn't put too much weight on it. But it is a positive sign, a very positive sign. At the seminar, I'll show you what I'm talking about. At the seminar, I can tell you how you can evaluate the strength of the current market. Why would you need to know that? Well, because when a market's really strong, you may want to overweight your momentum strategies. When a market's not very strong, you might want to overweight the dividend strategies. And if you didn't want to guess or make adjustments based on what the market's doing, then you do what we talked about you know, several minutes ago. You carry a little bit of both, and then you rebalance them. Because when one's doing well, you know, it's going to outperform the other. When you take some money out of that after after it's outperformed, 
and you add it to the other strategy. When that other strategy kicks in, you will have loaded up when, you know, when it was underperforming. Then when it outperforms, it increases your performance by that much more. How simple is that? Say that five times fast, by the way. <laughs> no, boy, the phone's uh, not even ringing. It doesn't matter if the phone's ringing because I can't reach it anyway. Hang on a second. I'm going to pull it over here. <laughs> if you'd like to call us, 216-901-0945. 216-901-0945. If you'd like to lo- learn a little bit more about that uh, seminar that we're talking about, just go to my website, bullingtoncapital.com. I think it uh, should be a lot of fun. 6.30, we're going to do stock talk. We're going to go for 45 minutes, take a 15-minute break, and then we're going to come back and talk about the momentum investing. Uh, that's the two, my two favorite models in that category that I use in my practice. One of them involves ETFs. The other one actually is small and mid-cap stocks. And uh, uh, I think it should be a lot of fun. So, again, feel free to visit the website, sign up, call us, you know, inquire, ask questions. It's, uh, I haven't, you know, I've never heard a, a really dumb question. I've heard a question over and over again, and uh, eventually um, it can be, uh, when you hear it so many times, it, when it comes from the same person more than five or six times, it's, it, it, it's a little tough to take sometimes. <laughs> but, but, you know, from new people, you've got to learn. So come and ask or call in. Call in the show and ask. There's no, there really aren't any dumb questions. And uh, they're just questions that don't get asked. And that's, that's unfortunate. You get a question, you should ask it. Yeah, that, that's the only way you're going to, well, I guess the other way to learn is to try uh, to do all of this on your own by studying and reading books. That is a bear. That's actually what I had to do. But I did this a long time ago when there were a lot fewer mutual fund, there were a lot fewer investment options available. So it wasn't as hard. And adding an investment option to the repertoire that you already have is nowhere near as difficult as learning all of it from scratch. And I really empathize with the people that are new to this, uh, young people, because they have created so many thousands of investment options now. And to become familiar with all of them is incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult. And I've got to uh, take a real quick phone call right now. And I've got uh, Daryl, and you have a question regarding J.C. Penny. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? Never better, thank you. How about you? Oh, hanging in there. Sometimes that's you a sound lot. Like you, your your raspy throat sounds like you have a vitamin deficiency. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> 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 I did. Uh, I, I did uh, that protein powder you gave me. By the way, tastes great. I mean, it, it's got a. Uh-huh. Probably one of the better tasting protein powders I've I've ever had, but uh, which makes me really nervous. <laughs> How do they get something that healthy that tastes that good? That that that's a you know that's a conundrum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If it tastes too good, you're used too much of it. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I like the cho- I like the chocolate mixed with uh, orange juice. Oh, uh, huh. I'll have to try that. Yeah, it tastes like a tootsie roll. Yeah, huh? That's interesting. I used to get those uh, yeah. chocolate oranges. Have you ever seen those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all come in uh, a orange aluminum foil. <laughs> yeah, you're as weird as I am. Yeah, <laughs> probably weirder. <laughs> anyway, you have to so be. Last... Go, Go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say last night I was uh, I had uh, nightly business report on in the background, and they always have a guru on and uh, towards the latter end of the show. And uh, he was talking about how great J.C. Penny is. Mm, cool. Somebody else noticed. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you look at the um, the volume, just about a little over a week ago, it picked up. The stock got still within you know five or ten percent of its fifty-two week high, and then the volumes dropped off, and the and the shares have slid back. Now, last time I looked, J.C. Penny's stock, they you know. On your Bloomberg terminal, they tell you how many shares outstanding are actually owned by a mutual fund or another institution. Yeah. And it was 97%. Well, so that only leaves 3% of the shares available in the float. Now, that's good and bad. The good news is it doesn't take a lot of buying to cause the share prices to go up a lot. The bad news is it doesn't take a lot of selling <laughs> to cause the share prices to go down a lot. <laughs> So you'd better have some idea of what that company is actually worth because the price is not going to reflect what it's worth. It's going to reflect whether there's been buying or selling. 
And there's a difference there. Stocks are not worth what their share prices are selling for. If they were, I would not have a job. Right. right. None, none of us would have a job. So if you look at the underlying economic value of a business and you see that the share price is significantly below that, that's called value investing. And that's what J.C. Penney is considered. It's a considered a value stock. It's not a growth stock because they they have growth. They have slow growth. Uh, and they're ahead of their plan. Their profitability is improving. But uh, And if they continue along these lines, that, that stock should go quite away. I mean, at one point in time, this was back in 07, that stock was almost $90 a share. That's, oh. It's nine eighty nine. And uh, this guy was calling for uh, this guy was calling for somewhere in the twenties uh, yeah. by next year. Well, I could see that pretty easily, and that, that's what we're going to be talking about. And in fact, I'll bring that up at the stock talk because when you know what to look for, that that's really not a hard calculation to do, and you should be able to do it on the you know on the back of an envelope, and it should take only a few minutes. You know, and the the data is freely available all over the internet in, in different places. The, the most valuable data, by the way, is free. It's SEC's. Uh, database, the Egger database, it, it takes a little more effort uh, to use that because it's a little clunky. Uh, and, but once you get used to it, then doing the research is nowhere near as difficult as it is for a, a brand new person. And the things that you need to know are really just, there are only a handful of items. Uh, and if the company doesn't fit or it doesn't meet those criteria, walk away. It's too hard. Why beat your head against the wall? Find an easier one. That's my suggestion. There are thousands of stocks out there. Find an easier one. Don't beat yourself up trying to figure out where something's going to go. That's imp- and if you do get that, uh, if you accomplish that, it's going to be luck anyway. So, hey, I only got about uh, 45 seconds before I have to take a commercial break. You want to uh, plug Nutriskies? Nutriskies.com. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, an opportunity to have a little mini office outlet and work from your home. Uh, 10 to 15 hours a week and pick up an extra thousand, three, four, five thousand dollars a month, depending on how hard you work. Um, all internet based. Uh, don't have to talk to people face to face. It's very slick, very so, slick so, new way of doing yeah. business on the internet. Sounds good to me. Hey, Daryl, thanks for Dude. calling. I'll be talking to you this week, too. All right. Thanks Bye. a lot, Bill. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye bye. And you're listening to Bill Bullington right here on 1420 The Answer. Uh, as soon as we come back from these commercial messages, we're going to be talking about uh, how to identify some of those things in those stocks. So stay tuned. And we're back. Where'd that music come from? <laughs> hey, sounds good. <laughs> Feel free to call us if you have a question, you'd like to talk about something. Uh, number is 216-901-0945. It could be anything financial. Uh, you know, when you come up getting closer to retirement, uh, one of the things that's been coming up recently, people have been asking about health insurance. And I've been doing some research, and uh, I think I have a, a couple of options. Uh, some people who specialize in the uh, health insurance, because that that's a big deal. You know, the vast majority of people... Um, Really, it's are dependent upon health insurance. That that is it's it's unbelievably important to your financial security. Uh, you know, you get in an accident, un, uninsured or underinsured, you know, it, it can cost you literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. And uh, wow, that's just um, it's tough. In fact, I I will tell you, uh, I had enough knowledge in that industry that it kept me at a brokerage firm for years because of, I was afraid if I were to leave and start my own business and I got sick that the health insurance company would jack my premiums up because back then they did this thing called medical underwriting. That's where they take a look at your health conditions and how much you're using your health insurance and then they base your premiums based on that and they would price me out of the market because I, because I saw that happen to other small business owners. I saw it happen in my own family. So I stayed for a lot longer until I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> and I just said, the hell with it. I'm just going to take the chance. <laughs> and and now they can't do that anymore. So that is one of the great things that happened with the uh, Health Care Reform Act. I know everybody seems to not like that a lot, but that was one of the good positive things that came from that. They cannot 
medically underwrite your insurance anymore, and uh, everybody qualifies, and they can't price you out of the market. Prior to the, the pricing out of the market, by the way, where they would just raise your premiums so high that you couldn't afford them, prior to doing that, they basically, when your policy came up for renewal, if you had been using your health insurance too much, they basically just said, we're not renewing your policy. Your health insurance company literally would not renew your policy. And think about that. They took so much flack for that that they decided to instead they would just jack your premiums up so high that you would quit. <laughs> Lovely. Anyway, i got to go to the phones right now. If you'd like to call us, 216-901-0945. And uh, I've got uh, Jerry and Solon. Do we have a question? Good morning, William. How I are have you? two questions for you, sir. Okay. Doing well, thank you. Um, first, in yesterday's Wall Street Journal, the front page, Icon Malls Herbalife Steak Sale. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Bill Ackerman has been selling a short for for ever and a day, mm-hmm. and now Icon is considering selling to him. I'm just wondering, what's your interpretation? Why would Ackerman want to buy it while he's selling it short? Uh, if the price got down low enough and he saw some value in there, he might just turn around and uh, change his position on it. So it's like somebody that, if, if you had shorted J.C. Penny a couple of years uh-huh. ago at eighty-seven bucks, you might be uh-huh. tempted to buy it down here at nine. <laughs> if you had, but I mean, Ackerman's lost a bundle on on the transaction. I think he's lost a billion dollars of his or uh, his shareholders' um, funds. It's not all his money, but he's lost a ton. Why would I mean at this point he's, he's be? Why would he be buying something he's already lost money? I mean, it just kind of goes contra to what. Well, what actually, if, if you, because if you have a really large, I mean, and, and I'm just speculating. I did mm-hmm. see this story, and I, I I just read the headline, and I moved on. I'm, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I know. You know. I'm not really interested in what those guys are doing. But the um, but here's a potential reason that you might do that. If you're short a big block of the stock, okay, let's say you're, you're short 5% of the outstanding shares, and typically on a daily basis only – Four to five percent of the outstanding shares will even trade. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you come in and try to you try to cover your short and buy all that stock at once, you're going to drive the prices up, and you're going to cost yourself a whole lot more money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if if uh, they can agree at an exchange at a price here, I'll sell it to you for this much, and you buy it, he buys it directly uh, from the, the counterparty. The mm-hmm. price the price stays the same. So mm-hmm. now he can unload a portion of his position without incurring more losses in, that are actually self-inflicted. Mm-hmm. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? It does. I, as I said, it's really just kind of strange. As I said, a guy going short, and now he wants to well, no, potentially if he, if he, pick it up. And in, uh, yeah, what I, and I, what I think uh, is going on there is, is, is probably what I was just talking about um, because the uh, – uh, if Icon had a big long position and he wants to get out, and Ackerman's got a short position and he wants to get out, they just meet in the middle and you know cut a deal. Well, I don't think either one of them have made any money on the transaction, and I think that uh, Ackerman actually has lost a significant amount. Right. Uh, I- Icon hasn't made anything, but it's just fascinating, as I said, trying to figure out what the what the heck was going on. I certainly wouldn't take a position in any of it, but I just trying to figure out what's going through these guys' head and it um yeah, for what it's worth. Yeah, well uh, if, if like I said, if if you've got a gigantic position and mm-hmm. uh you wanna unload it without moving the share price or you just want to cut back, uh you know, Icon goes and offers he says, Hey look, I know you've got this big short position. You can't cover the short position without moving the stock. I'll give you my shares at this price. Yeah, yeah. And there should uh, hopefully he would be able to sell it at a premium over what the market has. Uh, he might. He might try to negotiate that. In some cases, depending on how badly he wants to get out of it, he might even take, you know, to sweeten the pot uh, a couple points below market. Wow. Value. Yeah. Oh, he'd really be getting hosed on that deal. <laughs> well, yeah, not if he wanted to get out without moving the stock. Because if he sells his entire block at once, he's going to drop the share price more than that anyway. And, yeah. And that's what they're trying to do is, is guesstimate how much that would actually move the stock, and this would allow both of them to lighten up the position with minimal damage because damage, of the yeah. 
And look at J.C. Penny. The uh, the volume dried up on that after it just hit, it came within ten percent of a, a fifty two week high just a, a little over a week ago. And mm-hmm. there's been almost no volume. It's dropped below the average volume, and the share price pulled back. You know, twelve percent. Wow. So would you if if you were interested in JCP, would you would be um, purchasing leaps at this point? You wouldn't be buying the stock, correct? I both. You know, I oh, own a little okay. of stock, yeah, and I own some leaps on it. So it's a uh, uh, I got a little bit of both. But well, okay, if I'm nominally interested in it. I'm going to do one or the other. What would you suggest? Leap. Leap. Okay. <laughs> would okay. Leap. Yeah. You, would, yeah. you would do the right. leaps. Okay. And I, I'll probably uh, be able to talk about this one uh, at the next seminar, too, because those these things don't work out that quickly. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it mm-hmm. could. You never know. Somebody could jump up there but and buy a whole bunch of shares. But, when, when is the next seminar, Bill? Uh, it's the 6th of October. It's a oh, Thursday. 6th of October. Yeah, okay. and we're going to do it in two parts. The first part is the stock talk, where we're going to talk about J.C. Penny. I got, I bought some leaps on uh, uh, Genworth for some people, and mm-hmm. uh, added some to a uh, uh, my own positions. The um, in a little fund that I run, mm-hmm. and not a big. It's nothing big, but uh, it might be. You know, I think that uh, if things can uh, uh, continue to go down the road that they're going down, that that might be that might turn into a stock with a lot of potential. In mm-hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of potential. And uh, kind of like the uh, potential I saw in uh, J.C. Penny or Lionsgate or you know a lot of the other stocks over the years, uh, Corning. You know, when, it, when when a stock can easily double and still be selling at half of the industry valuation, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you're it, saying Genworth or Corning would uh, fit well, that model, yeah, Corning did that uh, when I bought it. The uh, Genworth is there now. Its valuation is literally, if, if the valuation doubled, if people were willing to pay twice as much for that stock as they're willing to pay today, it would still be half of what the average insurance company in their business, in their industry, sells for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still be half. Okay. Um, next, last last question I have for you, if you have a moment. Sure. Um, uh, healthcare, um, the industry itself, the pharmace- pharmaceuticals in specific, or specifically, I feel are um, apt to take a bit of a bruising after this thing with the iPen and so forth and so on. Uh, primar- primarily the uh, pharmaceuticals and the drug dispensing. Um, is there a uh, ETF available in that? There is. It's market cap weighted, though. And uh, now, that, what does that mean? That means that they're going to put more money into the bigger stocks. I got gotcha. you. No okay. matter what they're worth what they're actually worth. They're not paying attention to the economic value. They're paying attention to the market value, which we all know doesn't represent the economic value very often. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I would use the, uh, there are equal weighted ETFs now in those industries. That's probably how I would do it. Or, okay. or you could just pick out some stocks. That That's the thing I like about Folio. You can go and cherry pick your favorite companies from there, put a little basket of them together and buy them all at once with the click of a button. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? And they don't charge individual uh, commissions, mm-hmm. so because that would kill a strategy like that. Sure. So sure. yeah, I, that's that's one of the reasons I like that a lot. And because uh, you can do that, you can really customize, and it will actually track that portion of your portfolio separately from the others, as well as combined with it. So you can see how that's doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, that that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, have you? I was going to ask you, uh, Quailus. If you um seen that in your uh, momentum yeah that's that's, that, that's actually come up i in fact when it did i thought of you i was like yeah. hey there's jerry stock <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So. That, that was pretty funny it's yeah. uh it's moving it's, it, it's got a high price earning very high price earnings but it's still moving and uh yeah i wouldn't look uh, at the price to earnings though the price to earnings can be really misleading uh mm-hmm. you, you want to look at the price to sales mm-hmm. and uh that's again what we're gonna that first half of the the next seminar that I'll show you how I do that. And it's a back of the en- envelope, but it gives you a really good idea of uh, mm-hmm. uh, what that might be. And I'm going to try to pull that up again really quickly. Q L Y S. All right. That yeah, that's it, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So revenue, yeah, revenue was 181 million. It was up 21 percent year over year, which is really fast growth rate. Uh, the market cap, so the market value of the company right now is $1.2 billion. Uh, and, yeah, that, that's a, a relatively high price-to-sales ratio. 
So if I were interested in that stock, I would put a 10% stop on it, initial stop, and I would use a trailing stop of probably 15 to 20% or so. Because mm-hmm. uh, it it could fly or it could crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Which you can almost say for just about any stock. But when, when that one is, um, yeah, you're talking about over six times their annual revenues. Um, that's kind of on the high end. Uh, mm-hmm. But having said that, a software company has enormous profit margins. Their gross profit margin is actually 80%. That, that's, wow. that's mind-boggling. Yeah. Uh, yes. So 80% with 21% growth year over year, that's why it's, price, that's why its market value is so high relative to the amount of revenues they're doing because it's growing yeah. fast and it's really profitable. But if something happens, it could it could go down uh, yeah. just as quickly, yep. right? Yeah, and that, I mean, don't put a lot of money in it. <laughs> I was going to say, in essence, it would take a uh, something triggered by maybe a, a bum earnings report or something yeah. of that nature yep. to some big company so, sues them. Yeah, and it could be a million things. But uh, yeah, they, so they would be more susceptible. I would I would be uh, very. I would just put a small amount of money in there if you really wanted to do it and use some sort of a stop mechanism to get you out if it turns around and, and gets too bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. very good. Thanks so much, Bill. Hey, have thanks a, for uh, calling. You always make the show better, by the way. <laughs> All right, thank you. You're <laughs> very kind. Thanks. Yeah, bye-bye. Have a good weekend. And I got uh, John in Chardon. You have a question regarding the MLPN? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, Bill, we uh, talked about, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was going to expand my position in uh, MLPs, and right. you suggested this MLPN. ETF. Right. Uh, I looked it up, and the problem I think I may have is that it's uh, issued by Credit Suisse. Yeah, it's actually and, an exchange traded note, and uh, so if you don't like Credit Suisse, um, you may not want to invest in it. What this is yeah. is it's uh, these guys take precedence. So when um, when a bank banks everybody has debt, all publicly held companies, the vast majority of them have some form of debt. And there's a hierarchy the high, on uh, who gets what if the company has to file for bankruptcy. So yeah. these, these exchange-traded notes actually go way at the top of the list. Those notes are, you are basically taking a note that represents an interest in the portfolio. They do that for tax reasons because if they do it like a regular fund, tax-free income that you're getting is going to be taxable. So they have to do it. They have to format this as an exchange traded note to avoid that tax. Okay. And yeah. in a bankruptcy hearing, the exchange traded notes are at the top of the list of the creditors. Uh, the common okay. shareholders are at the bottom of the list. The yeah. preferred shareholders generally come right after you are know, just slightly above the common shareholders. Yeah, and then you have you know your senior debt, and then there are classes of 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 debt, uh, you know the bonds that they've issued, uh, and above those bonds come the notes, and I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I don't think they're the the highest level, but they are significantly above all the others. <laughs> well, that's somewhat comforting. Most of them. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I bought the stock. My brother-in-law, the, the broker, got me into the stock at okay. twenty-nine. And it's now around eleven, you know, and I just around eleven. Credit... Which yeah, one? yeah, that's that's the price of credit credit suites. I mean, check me out. Oh, there, you're but... oh, you're buying the stock. This is not the stock. Yeah, yeah. I was talking... well. No, no, no. We're talking about the same thing. All I'm saying is that this gives me concern as to where this company's going. My experience, as far oh, as buying. Oh yeah, stock. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, okay. so you're you're confusing the the stock price of the company credit Swiss with the economic value of the business. And a lot of people do that. The stock price only reflects, reflects the current perception. It's not based on what they could actually get if they were to sell that company. And and that's where the opportunity in stocks comes in. When people, uh, if people overreact, the share price goes down below its economic value. At some point in time, one of two things is going to happen. They're either going to get back on track, or actually one of three things. They're going to get back on track, share price goes up, somebody comes and buy them, buys them for what it's actually worth, share price goes up, or it does a death spiral. 
<laughs> hey, how can I take a quick commercial break? Did you want to hang on? No, yeah, I think you pretty well answered my question. Okay. <laughs> well, have a good All weekend. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. You- Oops, sorry about that. Listen to Bill Bullington right, on, uh, right here on 1420 The Answer. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back. Hey, listen to Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon. Uh, the show is simulcast on 1220 tomorrow night. Uh, not simulcast. It'll be rebroadcast tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, 1220. And uh, we also put it up on iTunes, so you can get it as a podcast. And it's on my website at BullingtonCapital.com. You can also sign up for the uh, seminar we've been talking about a little bit. Uh, this workshop, the uh, uh, this workshop, <laughs> this radio show, and that's going to be October sixth. That's a Thursday night. We're going to do a stock talk. You know, it's just a casual, informal talk about individual stocks. A lot of things that we like to do here every week on the radio. Um, got a little ebook. It, it'll be ready by then. I promise. The uh, I know people have been waiting for it forever. But I hate to, uh, I hate to disappoint. It's not as difficult. <laughs> Everybody thinks there's going to be this big magical thing, and uh, no, it's not. It, you know, to figure out what a company should normally sell for, like its its economic value or fair market value, or Warren Buffett likes to call it intrinsic value. You want to figure out what a fair market value of a company is. It's really not that tough. The tough thing is identifying a company that's selling significantly below where it would normally sell, and then having the discipline to get in there, buy it, and uh, hang on to it until that value is recognized. That's hard. And uh, it helps if you have a support group. So that's kind of what we are. The, uh, we're the support group for stock pickers. <laughs> and, uh, and I really think everybody should probably do this. I, I think it's a great exercise. You get to see uh, how difficult it can be uh, psychologically. The, the math is super simple. The math is not hard at all. But, and you don't have to be an expert at financial statements uh, financial statement analysis. It, it, does it help? Yeah, it would help, but it's not necessary. And uh, anyway, go to the website, bullyingtocapital.com, sign up. You can call us, ask questions, send emails, uh, give us suggestions on kinds of things you'd like to talk about on the show or like us to talk about on the show. Before the callers called in, we were talking about stocks. We were also talking about uh, health insurance and how uh, what a big deal that is for a lot of employers and for individuals that are getting close to retirement. It's, it's scary because uh, you know, you go through something and it's not covered by your health insurance. Uh, it, you can be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you're getting closer to retirement, getting closer to Medicare, you know, next week we'll talk in more detail about preparing for Medicare. That's something you don't want to mess up if you're getting you know close to that age. Uh, and I read that 10,000 people a day are turning 65 in the United States, that's a lot. Uh, so you've got to be signing up for this, not signing up for it can cost you a significant amount of money if you don't do it properly. So we'll talk more about that in the future, uh, on future shows. Uh, and I'll, I'm actually been, uh, in touch and contacting, trying to reach out to health insurance agents. So feel free to call me by the way, if you're a health insurance agent and, uh, you do individual policies, uh, give me a buzz. Yeah, because you never know. Uh, it might be able to, to help us all out. I don't want to do that business, The uh, but it's an important aspect for people to know about in retirement. It's incredibly important. Uh, it's one of the bigger expenses you're going to face in retirement are health care expenses. So uh, and if you're close, you know, there are an awful lot of people out there in their late 50s, you know, early 60s, uh, kind of not eligible yet for Medicare. They want to wait or, or want to get out now, but they're not sure they can pick up health insurance. It's a big deal. It's, it's a really big deal. And, I, and, I, and again, I would also solicit any suggestions you have for my radio show. If, if there are topics that you'd like me to talk about, feel free to call us the, uh, or send us an email and I will definitely try to touch on those topics. So having said that, by the way, I heard, uh, Basista's, uh, Basista Furniture's commercial during the commercial break there. And uh, you got to check out their website. 
I didn't realize how much time, effort, and energy they put into uh, updating that. I hadn't been there in a couple weeks. And wow, the uh, it, it's amazing. And uh, they really do provide value. When, when you compare, I don't know, furniture is kind of a thing of mine. The, uh, I always liked it, I think largely because my dad was a carpenter and, and I worked with him for so long uh, when I was growing up and even every summer, you know, when I was in college and even for a brief time after college. So uh, uh, I always liked the furniture and the, the wood aspects and the construction. Uh, these guys put out good quality stuff. Um, they sell good quality stuff. And the pricing is really hard to beat. The service you can't beat. So I'll just tell you that. Uh, so go to Basista.com. Uh, and I'd, I'd encourage you to go in and, and talk to them. You can order online. They do a lot of that. But uh, oftentimes you don't see something online. They've got catalogs there that uh, you can I, that's typically what I do. I just go through the catalogs and say, can you order that for me? <laughs> and uh, that's basically what, how I shop for furniture. So anyway, and I didn't even know those guys forever, man. I didn't know who they were, but uh, they're really nice guys. Uh, Tom and Stan, uh, you like them a lot. Give them a shout. So that's my plug for those guys. I like to see people, uh, small business owners that are really adding value. Uh, that's that's a hard thing to do. And uh, so I'd like to try to support those people that, that do a good job supporting others. Anyway, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember. Oh, you know what else we had talked about uh, was why charts. When I talked earlier in the program, we talked about doing the research online. And you can go to the website, or the FCC's website, or just go to Google and, and type in Edgar online. That's the electronic data gather and retrieval, that database that's owned by the SEC. You can look up just about any stocks, financials there. Uh, it's time consuming. It's, it, it takes a while to learn how to use it. There's another service that actually draws their data directly from uh, those filings. And it's called Y charts. Personally, I think it's worth the money. You see a company, you go in, you type in the symbol and it shows you everything you need to know. It's formatted nicely. It'll take you a little while to learn how to use it. But I think the uh, retail subscriber pays $40 a month. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of money, but it, you know, for the type of research that you're going to get, I don't think it's that much. The uh, for the, the amount of time that it's going to save you, I don't think it's that much. They're not paying me for this. Uh, something that I'm using myself uh, for my practice. I actually have the uh, the institutional version. It's a lot more than that. It costs a lot more than that. And uh, and it's, it's a very good service. Very good service. You want to look up sales profits. You want to see who their competitors are. It's all in one page or actually on one website with links. So anyway, so that's a really good thing to use. It's called Y charts. Actually, just like it sounds, Y charts, no spaces, just Y charts. Go and check it out. I think they give you a free trial period too, if you want to do that. So, and again, they are not sponsors of the show. I just like to give information out. I'm, I remember when I started, um, it was actually back in college and I took a finance class because it was majoring in economics, and I thought, well, I might as well see what you know, these, what finance has to say about this kind of stuff. And I took this class, and the professor recommended that we join the National Association of Investment Clubs, the NAIC. Uh, so I did, uh, thirty-five bucks, uh, and back in the mid '80s, that was a lot of dough for me. That was a lot of dough. And then I got this kit, and you know, the book is like three quarters of an inch thick, and I'm like, oh, geez, the uh, that's just what I need. <laughs> While I'm going to go, while I'm studying for school and playing football, the uh, uh, so anyway, I I read it anyway, and it you know it really helped. It really helped, and uh, I remember struggling with a lot of these concepts. And this book, I I had to struggle a little bit with that too. In fact, I won't tell you I read it during the semester. It was during Christmas break, but the uh, it really helped. It really put things into perspective. And they, they had you do this exercise that I think helped the most. And quite frankly, at the seminar that we're going to do, a lot of the material is I've just translated it into English you know, for, for non-financial people. And, uh, but it, they're the same concepts that these guys have been teaching for 50, 60 years. And uh, I try to break it down and make it a little bit easier for the average person to understand. Uh, I'm trying, by the way. I don't always succeed. But I will try to break it down for you. And uh, I was just so fascinated that markets worked the way that they did, you know. And I, 
I have a saying. Uh, most people that come to my seminars will repeat it. Somebody will ask why a XYD, XYZ stock did this or why did XYZ stock do that? And I look around at all the other people who've <clears throat> been to the seminars before and we all in unison go, because it's a stock. <laughs> and that's how stocks do. They are not logical in the short run. Over short time periods, like a two or three years, and sometimes for longer. And sometimes stocks never behave like they're supposed to, some companies. But the um, over a relatively short time period, which is anything less than two or three years, a stock can do anything. Can go up, can go down, can crash, can soar uh, over a four or five year time period. Then typically whatever happened with the company, if it grew, the stock price is normally higher. If the company contracted, then the share price is typically lower. Uh, but that's only over really long time periods. Over a shorter time period, two, three years, you know, there's not a whole lot of rhyme or reason oftentimes to why the share price is doing what it's doing. That makes it incredibly difficult psychologically to invest. And the th sooner you get that, uh, that knowledge and process it, the more effective you will be as an investor. And you're going to need to be an effective investor from now on. Uh, the days of just parking it, setting it, and forgetting it, those, those are kind of over uh, because you've got interest rates that are extremely low, uh, not likely to go up a lot any time real soon. And uh, so that means you're going to have to actually brush up on investing and get better at it, even if only to put your mind at ease when your managers that you're hiring are doing the things that they need to do uh, to try to make you money in the long run. So I've just been told I got about 10 seconds before I have to sign off. So I'm just going to tell you, thanks for listening, everybody. This is Bill Bullington. I'm here every Saturday morning from 11 to noon, 1420, The Answer. Have a good week, good luck, and good investing. Report. Broadcasting every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on AM 1420, The Answer. If you have a question and would like to speak to Bill personally, you can call him at 330-664-0700. That's 330-664-0700. Or contact him through his website, BullingtonCapital.com. That's BullingtonCapital.com. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Therefore, no current or prospective client should assume that the future performance of any specific investment, investment strategy, including the investments and or investment strategies recommended and or purchased by advisor or product made reference to directly or indirectly will be profitable. Different types of investment involve varying degrees of risk and there can be no assurance that any specific investment will either be suitable or profitable for a client's investment portfolio. No client or prospective client should assume that any information presented serves as the receipt of or substitute for personalized investment advice from the advisor or any other investment professional. The preceding program has been paid for by Bullington Capital Management, LLC.